Israeli government uh, to uh, comments like that that we saw from Hamas's leadership uh, is certainly understandable. Uh, but there's also a responsibility that both sides have to exercise restraint uh, and to prevent uh, you know, this one terrible act uh, from leading to a much broader, much more destabilizing situation. A possible revenge killing has rocked the already very fragile standoff between the Israeli government and the Palestinians. What must happen next to avoid a full-scale conflagration? And what America must do in the eyes of its greatest ally? All on the table and difficult for all to consider. Welcome into Midpoint, formerly with the Jerusalem Post and the Associated Press, now the Bureau Chief of the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, Ron Campius, joins us today. Ron, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Ron, I'd like to start out, first of all, with another soundbite, if you will. This is Jen Psaki, who is a spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, basically calling for the Israelis and the Palestinians to work together. Listen up. We have, as you noted, been in touch with both sides and have been urging continued security cooperation, um, that the Israelis and the Palestinians continue uh, to work with one another on that, and uh, we certainly would continue to urge that. Uh, despite, uh, in spite of obviously the tragedy and the enormous uh, pain uh, on the ground. Ron asking for the two sides to work together. Is that simply pie in the sky and naive at this point to think that there is any chance whatsoever that the Israeli government and the Palestinians can get together on anything, certainly at this time? Uh, it's, it's pie in the sky in terms of any hopes of, I think, reviving the peace talks in the in the in the immediate near future, because uh, I think tensions are so, feelings are so raw because of the uh, uh, of the discovery of the bodies of the three teenagers, Gilad Shar, Naftali Frankel, and Ayali Frach. Uh, I think that w y w what has been happening is that the, w what's happened throughout, even after the collapse of the peace talks in April, there has been cooperation between the Palestinian Authority security forces and the Israelis. As far as we know, I think the, the Israeli ambassador here, Ron Dermer, suggested yesterday that cooperation has consisted, uh, has been, has continued, has persisted, and the uh, and the Israelis, the Netanyahu government, did appreciate uh, Mahmoud Abbas's not just his condemnation of the uh, of the kidnappings, but the fact that he did it in 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 the heart of the Arab world, in Arabic, in in uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what the Israelis want to see now, I think, is 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 the uh, Abbas acknowledging that this kidnapping, these killings, are are proof positive that you can't coexist with Hamas. That 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 is pie in the sky. And maybe if uh, if there is if this does precipitate a a break between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, that might provide a path back towards cooperation. While Hamas has praised the kidnapping, there are many who would be asking. Certainly, it's nothing new to see trouble between the two sides here. What were they hoping to gain? Was this simply just a wanton act by someone who thought that they were uh, taking, a, 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 taking a, a shot at Israel, like getting involved again, creating a flashpoint here? What could have been the, the reasoning for the kidnapping of these three young men and then their killing? Uh, you know, the Hamas itself is not, a, it's, it's not exactly unified. It's not a, um, it, it, it's not a monolith. And uh, it is a terrorist organization overall. The organization adheres to uh, to values, to ideas that Israelis find abhorrent. It has terrible anti-Semitic uh, tracks written into its constitution. But even within the organization, there are those who really do favor uh, the unity that uh, that uh, that Abbas advanced in in the talks. Among them, Ismail Haniya, the uh, the prime minister of the Gaza Strip of the Hamas government there. And there are those who, who favor what they call armed struggle, which inclu include the terrorist attacks. So you, this might be, this, these, these killings might be uh, an effort and maybe even a successful effort to scuttle the, uh, the unity talks between Hamas and the, and the Palestinian Authority. Is there simply a thinking process from the Israeli government and the people who are close to the situation that there is absolutely no logical, reasonable way to deal with anybody from the Palestinian or from uh, from the Palestinian side, from Hamas, from anybody even remotely connected with them, that it simply is. And I'm going to use a, a phraseology here that many people will use, and I've heard this from a lot of people. They said we simply can't deal with animals. Is it simply just saying that that is the way many people feel in the Israeli government to this day? 
I think that the, you know the, there there is that feeling that v v tremendously angry feeling among the Israeli population. I think the Israeli government, even if, and, and when I talk about the government, even the entirety of the Knesset, going to the the right wing parties at the government, they 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 anticipate some kind of uh, having to deal with the Palestinians. Uh, I mean, the, the right wing anticipates eventually uh, Israeli sovereignty in in the parts of the West Bank where there are settlements now. And they they, they they anticipate a coexistence with the uh, with Palestinians and the Palestinian leadership, not one that the Palestinians are really are ready to accommodate right now in any case. But the, no, nobody counts out not having to de nobody counts out having to deal with the Palestinians and the Palestinian leadership. In the the differences are whether there can be a two state solution and the sides can come to an agreement, or whether for now the conflict simply has to be managed. But even if you manage the conference the conflict. You still have to talk to the Palestinians. Seeing as, once again, we try to look at both sides, all the different sides of a story here. What about those who would say that simply the Israelis continue to push the effort, certainly demolishing homes, actions that they take against the Palestinians, that they are just as much to blame for pushing this to the edge as anybody else? Where's the truth in that? I, I think, you know, the, the, that narrative is certainly out there. And what the Israelis would say and what the Israelis have said is that you can critique their actions. You can say they, they've gone overboard in one sense or another, but the actual action is not, they're, they're not out to make, uh, the, their, their end game is not making Palestinians' lives miserable. Their end game is not killing Palestinians. Whereas when you stop by a road, pick up three hitchhikers, and then shoot them in the back seat, that clearly is your end game. It's the, and that's the, you know, the, the huge moral, they would say that would be the huge moral difference between the, uh, between the sides. President Obama is certainly trying to bring the two sides together here. He is trying to bridge the rift. He is talking about getting the two sides together. And of course, we've heard a lot of this before. From your perspective then and what you know, what would, what does Israel expect America to do? What do the Israeli people expect America to do? And what is the opinion of the Israeli government when they hear the president talking about a group like Hamas and trying to be conciliatory in many ways towards them? I think that they, uh, they, they would regard any kind of concilia conciliation toward Hamas as, uh, as naive. And, uh, and I think that you know, what they perceive is, is, I don't know if they see the, Isra the Americans, that is, uh, John Kerry and President Obama as being conciliatory towards Hamas. Uh, they see them more as wanting to wait and s see how this plays out. And from the Israeli perspective, uh, how the, uh, the Palestinian Authority Hamas unity talks play out. From the Israeli perspective, they can't play out. They can't play out in any way that's good. Either they collapse and it goes back to the, uh, the status quo ante, or they advance. And the, the Palestinian government has accepted within its ranks uh, a terrorist organization that has as its end game the, uh, the, not just the elimination of the, of the Jewish state, but the removal of the Jews from the, uh, from the, uh, from the region. So they, they would see that as, uh, as naive. But on, on the other hand, I think they also perceive a real retreat from the Ameri by the Americans from attempts to uh, advance the peace process. You saw the, uh, the resignation last week of Martin Indyk, who was mm -hmm. the chief uh, peace process negotiator. It's a sign that the Americans have said, OK, we've done everything we can until now, and now it's up to the sides. Is it simply, I guess at this point, ineffective for America to do anything at this point. Certainly there are calls, but as you just pointed out, for the American government to sit and wait as much as that might be abhorrent to some people, but that is the smart thing to do at this stage, at, at, at such a tender stage of, of the relations and what's happened in the last week? Yeah, it might be, you know, to, 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 to twist a Winston Churchill phrase, it might be the least stupid thing to do. There just might not be anything else to do right now because even before the kidnappings and even before the discovery of the bodies and even before the ostensible revenge killing today uh, outside Jerusalem, even before all those things, uh, the, the sides were just simply too far apart. And that's what drove the, the, the talks to collapse. They were apart conceptually. Mahmoud Abbas, for instance, absolutely rejects any Israeli military present, presence in, uh, in a nascent state of Palestine after an agreement. Netanyahu just said over the weekend on Sunday night that that's inevitable and that it's going to be, quote, for a very long time. How do you reconcile that? You can't reconcile that right, right at this moment. Ron, something else that came to our attention today. The World Jewish Congress 
He's urging the international community, and in particular the United States and the European, uh, European, uh, European Union, I'm sorry, to hold all financial support for the Palestinian Authority until Hamas is excluded from all government bodies. Is there any chance whatsoever of that succeeding, or is that simply just a, a good beginning talking point? I think under existing law, that, that's going to have to happen. It'll be uh, if Hamas does come into the government. If you look at the, at the way the laws were written, there was a, a law that was initiated by Ileana ross uh the Florida Republican, in 2006. And it says that if, uh, if Hamas has, uh, has any sort of measurable predominance in a Palestinian government, you can't fund the Palestinian Authority. There are attempts now in Congress to tighten that and to say that if Hamas has any influence, any influence whatsoever, not just undue influence over a Palestinian government, then uh, aid has to be uh, cut off. The, the thing that's frustrating that now is, like I said before, there's, there is security cooperation between the Israelis and the Palestinians. The Israelis are of two minds about uh, American assistance to the Palestinians. On the, other one, on the one hand, they don't want the Americans or anyone else to encourage uh, the Palestinian unity talks with Hamas. On the other hand, they do have an infrastructure set up that uh, allows for a coexistence between the Israelis and the Palestinians in the, in the West Bank, and they don't want that harmed either. So they're sending mixed signals there. Ron Campius, I want to thank you so much for your insight here. Let's absolutely stay in touch and talk again. Okay, thank you. It is scary indeed what is happening there. All right, what happens when you hold a national book tour that is badly disguised as a campaign tour? And people aren't paying as much attention as you might have hoped? That's the question. We have answers coming up here on Midpoint.